Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about MIP mapping. Now MIP mapping is an excellent technique if you want to optimize your game engine or if you want to reduce artifacts from over processing of images. So yeah, it's going to be really useful for us. Like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Let's jump into it because this one should be pretty quick. Okay, so say we have this party parrot. It's a quad and it takes up this specific space on this screen. So the initial image of the party parrot was 256 pixels by 256 pixels. Now say we wanna make this parrot smaller. When we make it smaller, our GPU still needs to figure out the 256 by 256 pixels. So it'll go through and calculate and determine what gets rendered on the screen. Now that is a lot of computations on one image to be doing for something so small on the screen that doesn't need that amount of detail. So say we take this image, this 256 image, 256 by 256 and divide it by two. So once we've divided by two, now we can use this image, this 128 by 128 pixel image for farther away detail. It's still the same image, still has the same level of quality, just, you know, smaller. Now, if we wanted to move it back a little more, we'll do a 64 by 64 and you see we've divided it in half. That's the key concept of MIP mapping. We're dividing it in half so that when it's farther away, it's about half the distance, uh, it'll still maintain that same quality. And so say we wanted to render 32 by 32, well, there we go. As things get farther, we can use less detail to represent the exact same thing all the way out there in space until we have a one by one pixel because it only takes up one pixel. That's all we need is one pixel. And we're only gonna be doing processing on that image, one pixel, all the way out there in space. Now this concept is known as MIP mapping. And like I've said, it's all it is is taking one base image and dividing it by two, the width and the height, dividing those by two until we finally have a one by one pixel at the very end. And the second concept that goes alongside with this is level of detail. Okay, so you can apply level of detail on multiple things. You can apply them to textures or 3D meshes. All the concept means is as things go off into the distance, they don't need to be represented with such high quality. Take this little patch of dirt, for instance. Really, it's just a blur from our point of view because we can't see you know, up close. We know that there is detail, but we don't need to see all of that detail. But if we were to walk up to it and look really close, we'd see all sorts of little pebbles. And if we were to look even closer, we'd see all that detail, but we don't need to show all that detail from where we're standing on the road because it would be pointless. We're rendering way too much. We're, we're not optimizing for you know the current scene that we're working with so i'm going to show you how to do this with our engine it's very easy i promise uh so let's jump into it okay so picking up where we left off in the last episode you'll see we still have this cool cruiser um but i need to modify the scene to be able to explain exactly what mid mapping is so i'm going to go over to the code real quick and i'm just going to modify this file and i'll show you exactly what it all is right after i'm done um, but let me go ahead and do that real quick Okay, so I finished coding out our scene and I'll talk about it in a second, but there's one more thing I need to do that's offline, off, the, off this page, and that's go over to the sun and just remove this sphere mesh type, okay? Because I don't want the sun to appear on our page. It's there, there is a position, it will still be you know, rendered as a light, but there will not be a mesh because I don't really want there to be a mesh. Okay, so if we go back to the scene, let's, uh, let's talk about what we did. I'll run it and then we'll talk about exactly what we did. So the first thing I did was I created a quad instead of the cruiser. So I just replaced the quad or the cruiser with a quad. And then I've only have one sun. And so the sun's only in one location. Okay. Um, and then I kind of kept all of those properties the same. The next thing I did was, you know, rename these to quad and said quad.set material is lit to false. And the reason I set the material on this quad to not be lit is because there's a bug. And we're going to fix that at the end of this episode. It has to do with alignment of like our float types, but I'm not going to say anymore. We're going to get to the bug for, uh, to the mit mapping first. And then I've set the texture to this quad to party pirate parrot. Oh yeah, looks good. Now, if you notice, you don't really notice because as I zoom out, it becomes smaller and smaller, right? And that doesn't look like a parrot to me anymore. It just looks like pixels. Looks like we should mit map this. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So mint mapping is really easy to do in a game engine. Okay. It's going to be a couple lines of code at most. So we're going to start in our entities. We're going to go into libraries and texture library. 
And it all starts when we load our texture. We're calling load texture for all of these different textures that we're loading. And so here's the load texture from bundle. And all we need to do, just one simple thing, is change this dictionary right here to just be a little different. And what I mean by a little different is for the options, we need to add MTK texture loader dot option dot, and if I just start typing mint maps, you'll see two things come up. You'll see generate mint maps and allocate mint maps. We wanna generate mint maps, but just know that you can allocate the space for the mint maps and fill those out yourself. Now that is way beyond this tutorial, but in our case, we're just gonna let the engine do it. Um, obviously this takes up more space. So me just saying uh, generate mint maps for every single image that we load is kind of unoptimized. You might wanna make this like some sort of a variable that you pass in. I don't care right now, so I'm just gonna make it true. Um, and then to make this compile, all we need to do is replace this right here with any, and then origin now needs to be in any. And that is how you add mint mapping. It's that simple. Okay, it's not that simple. There's one more line of code that we need to add. We now need to go into the sampler state. So the sampler state is what samples each individual pixel of our texture. We need to tell this sampler that there is a MIP sample function. So all we need to do is go down to our linear state sampler state, the one that we're currently using, and we just need to say sampler descriptor dot uh, MIP filter. So just like we have these min, mag, and MIP filter, we're going to set that dot to dot linear. Basically, this is just a function for determining what pixels to grab from where. So if I press play now, what's gonna happen? Who knows? Let's find out. Ah, look at this. It's beautiful. Looks the same, right? <laughs> Good. It's supposed to look the same. It's not supposed to look like it's working uh, because, you know, if it looked like it blurred out and looked really crappy, that, that means it's doing a bad job. So let's press this little camera down here and capture a screen and go see what's actually happening under the under the hood. So when we go to the draw primitives and we click on this, it's using this party pirate parrot texture. I'm gonna click that and here it is. Here's our party pirate parrot. But I wanted to show you this down here. So the MIP map level at, MIP map level at zero uses this texture. If I go up one level, you see, it'll start using this. And it does this under the hood. I don't need to do anything. It just kind of kind of works. And if I were to go down to five, it'll use this with only eight by eight pixels. That's what it'll do under the hood. I don't have to do anything. And I can prove to you that it's working because in our sampler descriptor, we can say one more thing. We can say sampler descriptor dot uh, LOD min clamp equal to a number. So if I say four here, the highest resolution image that we can actually use is four. Uh, because zero is the best quality. That's our base image. Up to N, zero to N, N is going to be the worst quality. That's gonna be the one pixel. So zero to N, it goes in between, half, 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 you get the idea. So if I put four on here, what do you think happens? That's right, it's gonna look really crappy. So yeah, so as I zoom away, at some point, yeah, it looks fine. But when I get up close, since we're using this level of detail, that's what we get. We do have some more stuff we have to fix up. So let's go ahead and close these. Let's go back to our sandbox scene and let's look at this bug. So quad.set material is lit to false. Let's remove that line and make it lit. First issue is this is a custom mesh. And if we go to our custom meshes, so we'll go to entity mesh library, go down here to the bottom to the quad custom mesh. That's what quad's using. It's using this custom mesh. There's no normals for this. So let's add some normals. This is now facing, this is a normal facing us. It's pointing at us. You'll know all about normals if you went through the lighting stuff. Um, second thing I'm gonna do is go to sample state and I'm just gonna set this equal to zero. So it uses the best one to start with. If I press play, let's see what's happening. So it's still not working. It's still not lit. Why is it not lit? Well, we can, we can investigate this using our good old fashioned debugger. So hit that camera, let's capture a frame and see what's happening under the hood. And we're gonna go to the draw primitives because that'll show everything that's currently on the state when we draw the primitives. This first buffer up here is our vertex buffer. That's what we wanna look at, so I'm gonna click it. And you see all of the things we're sending in. So we have position, those look good. Color, those look good. Texture, those look good. 
Normals look like crap. Why do the normals look like crap? Well, this is an alignment issue. So float three and float four are 16 bytes, okay? Float two is only eight bytes. So you can kind of tell that if this is 16, this is 16, this is eight, and this is 16, it's missing four bytes right here, or excuse me, eight bytes. Well, each float is four bytes, so boom, look at that. Those are those extra bytes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my vertex descriptor library, go down to our basic vertex descriptor, and all I need to do is change this float two to a float three. So now I'm not offsetting it by eight bytes, I'm offsetting it by 16 bytes. This is alignment stuff, this has to do with low level the way that the alignment is so that it can read data faster. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things to learn about with that. I don't need to go into the detail. I can just tell you how to fix it. And uh, we should now be lit up. It wasn't lit because it's directly overhead. But now if we go down a little bit, you'll notice we have this quad that is lit, son. It's using this texture. He looks great. He's getting mip mapped right there. So if I go into my capture frame, let me go into the party pirate parrot. You know, he has his level of details going all the way back. Currently right now, if I were to zoom, can I zoom in on this? Oh, yes I can. You'll see that that parrot only takes up four by four, so he's gonna use four by four. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this, press play, finish up this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you learned something about mint mapping. I'll put some resources in the description so you have stuff to go off of because there is more to know than just it mint maps. So hope you like this. Comment, like, subscribe, do all what you do what you do. Okay? And I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.